Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's Infopedia web conference titled Skype for Business Adoption Methodology and Success Framework. We're finishing some last minute uh, preparations for our show and we'll be getting started in just a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome again to today's Infopedia web conference titled Skype for Business Adoption Methodology and Success Framework. We are broadcasting this web conference via Skype meeting broadcast and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. If you do not consent to being a part of a recorded session, we ask that you please disconnect your browser at this time. Attendees may access the web conference recording via a link that will be delivered within 72 hours post-conference. You may ask a question at any time using the Q&A panel located either to the right of your screen or by scrolling down to just below the video pane. Our presenters are going to be responding to your questions throughout the presentation and again at the end of the presentation during a formal Q&A. Lastly, if you experience any technical difficulties during today's web conference, first try refreshing your web browser by pressing the F5 key on your keyboard. If that doesn't work for you, you'll want to go ahead and click on the support link at the top right corner of your browser. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the session. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Principal Program Manager Mike Hollinshead. Mike, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Janice. Hello, folks. Thank you for attending today's Skype Academy session on the Skype Operations Framework. Today, we will be discussing adoption. Your rollout approach can impede or accelerate change. This session will introduce you to our adoption methodology and overview proven success factors to ensure you are set up for success. We'll supplement the session with links and details to end user training and adoption materials, such that you have a jumping off point to launch a successful Skype for Business adoption campaign. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Mike Hollinshead, and I am a Principal Program Manager Lead on the Customer Experience and Adoption Team. That's also my two-year-old daughter, Alicia, who I never pass up an opportunity to show off. My days are full of interacting with various customers, ensuring they are successful within their Skype for Business adoption efforts, then taking those learnings, creating new solutions and content, and making this available to you all. To learn more, please visit www.skypeoperationsframework.com. The intent of SOF is that it's a living and breathing service. Please do take the time to share feedback. We'll be listening and working to evolve our content in upcoming versions. Quick disclaimer, note that this is a, one, a V1.0 of this training. As we continue to iterate, some of the material referenced in this training will undoubtedly change. So for those of you that view this training as a recording in the future, you may find some details are not identical to the training recording. When we have significant updates, we will look to update the training as needed. So please just keep that in mind. All right, with all our housekeeping behind us, let's begin discussing adoption, shall we? One last thing now that I have your full attention, as Janice noted, please note that you can use the Q&A panel to ask questions throughout today's session and we will be collecting those questions to answer real time at the end of the session or offline as appropriate. A key to your success is that adoption truly spans all phases of our customer success framework. 
SOF will be providing you the tools and resources to leverage in each phase, starting upfront with your planning efforts and spanning all the way through to operation. You'll note that adoption is specifically listed in the, in the deliver phase for SOF, but we wanna make sure that we're explicitly calling out that it does apply across all three phases of plan, deliver, and operate. Fundamentally, we are asking users for a change of behavior. I truly believe that Skype for Business transforms your ability to connect with those in your workplace. But it's not enough to simply deploy new software onto an end user's desktop and expect folks to instantly integrate these solutions into their daily use. To truly gain habitual use, you must put real effort into the behavior change you are adv advocating for within an organization. We're providing you with the tools, methods, and resources to avoid the unfortunate common scenario of end user readiness being an afterthought, and the result of which on the overall effectiveness of your rollout. This is a critical conversation to begin with early on in planning. The intent of this presentation is to overview the specifics in our Skype for Business, Business Adoption Toolkit, which when applied, has a proven track record resulting in greater impact, as the diagram on the right indicates. It's critical you familiar, familiarize yourself with these resources such that you can land this message with any customers you are engaged with. Our journey begins by walking through the content of our adoption success workshop materials. This is overviewed within the soft framework via PowerPoint deck named the same, as well as highlighted up on fasttrack.microsoft.com. As I progress through each section, I'll deep dive further on additional content made available via SOF. Now you'll note many callouts to both fast track and SOF adoption content. This is intentional as our core adoption methodology has been integrated with Office 365's fast track approach. It makes sense from perspective of adoption being a consistent platform required across the Office 365 suite. Our Office 365 partnership allows us to provide the baseline framework of which SOF extends upon this and then provides any Skype for business specific content. For now, we are cross-referencing materials and in the future, we're working on streamlining and consolidating content. We partnered with the Fast Track team to hone in on the following four success factors highlighted on this slide. People, scenarios, awareness, and training. By investing in each, you create a base platform to execute change initiatives moving forward, which you can leverage over time. So let's get started with people. Ensuring your customer has the right people assembled is fundamental to your efforts. Have the critical conversations upfront to ensure you have the right individuals enlisted. You'll see the key roles called out for adoption efforts on this slide. Some additional points for consideration are, ensure business owners are bought into the core Skype for Business scenarios you work to highlight. Having the right stakeholders provide early feedback is key early on in the planning phase. Ensure education and communication leads are identified and resourced. This framework provides a baseline of materials, but depending on your customer need, these resources may need to be customized as appropriate and leverage the reference stakeholders guide for additional details on each role, broken down by expected responsibilities, activities, and areas of influence. Next up are scenarios, providing value to customers on why they're using our products in the first place. People use things because they are useful. Don't assume them if you build it, they will come. To truly enlist our customers and their users, you must connect Skype for Business to real business challenges and land the what's in it for me message. You'll note the anatomy of scenarios on the slide, and I do recommend the productivity library available up on fasttrack.microsoft.com, which aligns to user personas and helps you get your creative juices flowing when you're working through this. Now, as a part of this, we're not asking you to start from scratch. The Office 360 top five team has put together the following core modern collaboration scenarios to get you started. 
Each has a hero workload highlighted with make meeting matters, make meetings matter being Skype for businesses. That being said, you'll note that each also has integration points with the various Office 365 workloads, highlighting the power of the suite as a whole. We'll now deep dive into an abridged version of the Make Meetings Matter scenario content. A full copy available both in SOF, in PowerPoint format, and up on fasttrack.microsoft.com. As you must be able to deliver this business value messaging highlighted in the provided content. This is where our disclaimer comes in as well, where this content will be living and breathing experience. As we continue to ship and offer new services, our messaging will be updated to land new on-ramps to the service. So expect this to get an update via our work with the Office 365 team. Our core messaging is around great communication. Teams that communicate often and openly are better teams. They're more efficient, they respond faster, they plan better, and help one another more effectively. They listen to customers and market trends, they share insights amongst, them, amongst themselves, and they challenge one another openly. They are great communi communicators, and that makes them a great team. This content will help you envision this with your customers. Skype for Business really is the underlying foundation of Office 365. It is the one application that connects all the workloads together, enabling people to communicate by making and taking calls, enabling them to share by presenting in and attending meetings, and enabling them to create through document sharing and various collaboration scenarios. Landing the message that you can do all of this via one collaboration platform, Skype for Business, is key. There are currently two primary use cases that we'll now drill into. First, Skype for Business is a complete meeting solution. It is the one platform you need for every kind of meeting and every kind of device. Our feature-rich platform enables your teams to do their best work no matter where they are in the world. Secondly, Skype for Business enables you to communicate your way. From conducting meetings to engaging with your contacts, Skype for Business can be tailored for you and is flexible for any audience. Let's get going with the complete meeting solution. Skype for Business offers many ways for you to connect with your customers anytime from wherever you are. First, you can join a Skype for Business meeting from anywhere as long as you can access the internet. The best, the best option is to use the Skype for Business client if you have it installed. If you're on the go, use the Skype for Business app to join a meeting from your phone or tablet, such as an Android phone or an Apple iPad with one click, and you'll get audio and video along with all the shared content too. Otherwise, you can call into the meeting from a phone. Next, invite more people easily through Skype for Business or using the dial out conference option through PSTN. You can also choose the actions participants can take in a meeting, add or remove participants, mute attendees, block char char charts or video, and control who is able to present. Finally, if you need to step away from your desk or are suddenly called away and want to stay in the conversation, you can transfer your call to a mobile device easily and seamlessly. Engage colleagues by adding video or expand your conversation to include additional participants. Enhance your meeting experience by turning conference call into a video call to meet face to face with just one click. Video calls help bridge the distance between people across the world and make conversations more personal. All you need is a camera and a certified device or headset. Finally, Skype for Business can help you collect input, make decisions, and get work done faster with tools to keep your team engaged and involved. 
If you are a presenter, you can show your entire desktop or just selected programs to everyone in a Skype for Business meeting. You can switch between multiple programs to display everything you're working on in real time. You can choose what people see, your whole screen or just a single program. Upload your PowerPoint presentation to annotate slides in real time during your meeting or let someone else present on your behalf. You can also make PowerPoint slides available for downloading to all attendees for reviewing during or after the meeting. After the meeting, share notes, share a recording of the meeting, or schedule follow-up meetings with your participant. I love the OneNote integration. This is something that I use every day in my day-to-day -day life, uh, as well as the upload PowerPoint presentation and anatonic slides uh, during your meeting. <clears throat> what I recommend is when you're presenting this content to a customer, you're actually leveraging this functionality as well, and you're showing off the power of this integration with Office 365. It really brings home the, the impact of what these scenarios can provide to customers when you're actually presenting the content and leveraging the functionality at the same time. In summary, Skype for Business is your one platform for every type of meeting and every kind of device, truly providing you with a complete meeting solution. Now, let's spend some time exploring the communicate your way use case. Since Skype for Business is now built into Office apps, you can collaborate with your team directly from within your documents or from an email and Outlook. And Skype for Business works across desktop, computer, and mobile devices. So all your contacts are in reach, whether they're in the office or on the go. Get input quickly without leaving your desk. When you reach to, out to a colleague for help, you can IM, screen share, talk, or video chat to discuss your project. That's key from my perspective. So many times I'm lost in my inbox. There's so many mails that come in. This is your ability to leverage the power of what Skype for Business can offer you when you can reach out to a colleague in real time to access them for help or answers to questions, whatever it may be to collaborate on a particular scenario. While you're working, you can also bring others into a conversation and share your desktop so you can make decisions in real time, as I mentioned previously. Skype for Business enables you to connect to your contacts from your desktop. In fact, Skype for Business is woven right into your Office app so you can reach your team from within a Word document or Outlook directly. Through Skype for Business, you can find people easily and reach out to chat real time, one-on-one -on -one or with a group. You can add anyone from your company and two types of external contacts, both Skype for Business users at other companies or organizations and Skype users. Search for anyone in the Skype directory and then add them to your contact list or connect with people through contact cards that appear in your inbox, sites, and office apps. In Outlook, click on an email from someone you would like to contact. You can check the person's presence indicator, indicator next to his or her name. If it's green, the person's available. Start an IM conversation with contacts in just one click. Less formal than email and faster than a phone call, Skype for Business IM is tough to beat for speed and ease of use. However, a person's photo to show the Skype for Business quick menu, which you can use to start an IM, audio or video conversation, or send an email. You can easily expand your spontaneous conversation to include other people and file sharing too. Take your IM conversation a step further by converting your IM into a meeting. Add audio or even video, drag contacts from the Skype for Business main window into the bottom of your IM window to add them to the conversation. Hover over the monitor in your Skype window to present your desktop or program and add attachments or poll participants to get input from your team without ever leaving your document. Then schedule a follow-up meeting to continue your conversation.
By leveraging the core make meeting matter scenarios and provided use cases, you have solid footing to build your customer scenarios. Some tips and resources along the way to help you are, make sure to adapt this core scenario and content to make them personal for your organization and your customer. You know, we've started with a good jumping off point for you, but to make this truly come to life, you need to adapt this to the organization that you are working with. To help you with that as well, consider these various persona, consider the various personas that will engage with Skype for Business. Check out the Office 365 Productivity Library, which helps you along those lines and, and takes common collaborative scenarios based on user personas and, and provides you scenarios at which this can come to life for you and your organization. And then make sure to document this in your fast track success plan. You know, scenarios are living and breathing materials that you'll want to adjust and adapt in the future. Document them. Documenting them helps you have a jumping off point in the future when you do want to revisit and revise them. All right, let's spend some time on awareness and training. So from an awareness perspective, you definitely want to ge generate some awareness and excitement around the product. You're asking folks to change their behavior, make it exciting and fun for them, and make sure they know what's coming. To aid with that, leverage announcements and newsletters to inform and inspire your end users with what this vision looks like. We'll talk about this in an additional slide, but we'll provide you with resources on, again, what you can start with from a framework perspective and then adapt that content to your needs and use. Make sure to leverage engagement events like contests and town halls to keep momentum going forward. Get people to interact with the services and ask questions. That's key. Daily habitual use really translates to folks engaging with the product, exploring more of the product, and then asking those questions to make sure that they're unblocked and they understand the full value of what this product can provide them. And then run online engagement events such as Skype meeting broadcast. So a component of the soft framework is around actually holding a Skype meetings broadcast awareness event to roll out Skype for Business within your organization. We provide you not only the training materials on how you can become familiar with, with holding your own Skype meetings broadcast event, but also a sample training deck that you can leverage for a particular customer that you then customize to your customer scenarios or needs. The other power of this approach is that you're actually leveraging the product itself to launch the product. So you're drawing users into what that experience will be like when you hold the next all hands within your organization or major awareness campaign that's coming down the road. And again, there'll be more materials available to you on the next slide, and we'll go in further depth of, of, of what you can leverage to be, become proficient in these matters. And then finally, from an awareness perspective, don't stop at the launch event. Make sure that there's tips and tricks available uh, and that you're sharing success stories from your end users. And commonly, what we've seen is organizations have created their own portal where they uh, have a Skype for Business landing page. We really highly recommend that as a best practice where folks can go and discover more about Skype for Business tailored to an organization within their own internet. So next I'll transition into training. I'll talk about it in the next slide, but there are resources available from a training perspective that align to the Make Meetings Matter scenario and use cases that we just discussed. These resources are available in both a video format as well as HTML format, such that it aids those folks that learn in different manners. And so this is why we really recommend considering different training approaches for your end users, both in the format itself that's being delivered, as well as classroom style events, you know, getting started guides, which will provide more content in the next, uh, next slide. Developing a set of champions within your organization. This is key. These are the Skype for Business experts that are sprinkled throughout your organization that folks can rely on to ask questions in person, 
and also expand the value of, of what the product can offer folks by serving as role models throughout the organization of using the product. Please spend the time to invest in your champions as these are the folks that uh, have proven time and time again will expand the, the usage and the ROI of the product by having these set of folks within an org. As well as then finally, setting up informal sessions such as office hours where folks can come into a particular informal session they feel comfortable sharing, hey, I'm having a particular problem with this modality. I'm having a problem joining meetings, whatever the use case may be, have an open forum where they can come and discuss those in an open format and be able to get the help and assistance that they might need to then take the product forward and make sure that their use is, is continuing to evolve and expand. So you'll hear this continued uh, sprinkled out throughout this presentation. Your next steps from this perspective is making sure that you consider a training and awareness plan that it's specifically documented in your success plan. You know, simple plans work, but more effort equals better outcomes. And then use the template plans and the supporting resources to help. So what are those resources around awareness and training? So SOFT provides quite a bit of content I mentioned earlier the awareness campaign launch event using Skype meetings broadcast. Look for that specific deck named the same, uh, which provides you training on whole, how to hold one of these awareness campaigns on your own, as well as the sample deck that I mentioned, which allows you to tailor a, the base case around rolling out Skype for Business and introducing Skype for Business to an organization. Now you'll of course want to modify that to an organization's needs, but again, along the theme of this presentation, it provides you the jumping off point to begin with. We also provide within SOF Skype for business specific job aids and awareness email templates that you can leverage as a part of your awareness campaign and rollout. So the next resource that I'll mention is the Make Meetings Matter uh, resource materials up on Office 365 on, on the Fast Track Center. Office 3, we partnered with Office 365 to provide a really nice set of posters, banners, additional announcement templates, and tip sheets centered specifically back on the Make Meetings Matter scenario and use cases. The idea again is that you don't have to go and recreate the wheel, you've got a jumping off point. Um, with professionally produced uh, materials that then you can take and leverage for your awareness campaigns and then modify to your needs as well. So from a training perspective, make sure to visit the Office 365 Training Center for scenario-based training tracks. So this is what I mentioned before as well. The, the training tracks are aligned to the use cases that we talked about previously specifically the complete meeting solution and communicate your way. The materials are in a variety of format, both video and HTML, such that they are useful for various forms of consumption from your end users. And this is another plug where, you know, these will continue to evolve as our Skype for Business service evolves as, as well. We will continue to add new use cases under the Make Meetings Matter scenario umbrella. So stay tuned as new adoption materials become available in that format. The next resource you can leverage is our YouTube channel around maximizing your Skype for Business adoption. This provides resources uh, and materials along the same lines that I'm presenting today. And as we update the materials uh, along the lines of additional use cases, uh, training guides and materials, we'll also make sure to publish that up on our YouTube channel so that they're available for folks to consume. The next link is a useful one uh, around discovering more on Skype for Business. I describe this as the entry point to your Skype for Business universe. There's additional training, training help topics, and a particular link that I find useful, which is what's coming, what's coming in the service and what's new in the service that you can consume. And then finally, make sure to leverage the office blogs for more specific community related conversations on Skype for Business.
So in summary, we've covered the core success factors proven to deliver results with Skype for Business. Your next steps are ensure that you can are to ensure that you can you can deliver the following on customer engagements. Setting vision and identifying business scenarios by confirming the right people are identified for each role and defining your customer scenarios. Prioritizing solutions and creating a success plan. Make sure to prioritize those particular scenarios that apply to a particular user in a clear fashion such that you understand the target that you're after when you're rolling out your adoption materials. And then document your training and awareness plan such that it's a resource you can go back and augment in the future and then replay as you're relaunch relaunching additional change management events. Finally, this all ties together in the, in the notion of a success plan. When you visit fasttrack.microsoft.com, you will have the ability to tie this all together within a success plan. That's absolutely key in ensuring that you have an organized rollout plan per, tailored per customer such that you can execute on all of the above. Make sure to leverage the Skype for Business specific content in SOFT that I mentioned before, as well as all of the resources available up on fasttrack.office.com driving drive value. This is the location where you can find the core adoption methodology framework components that I mentioned, and it continues to evolve with additional content around scenarios, the methodology, communities where you can learn more from peers along your, uh, as well as yourself, and then resources where you can learn more, gather more customer stories, and special offers to help make you get help you get started. It's all up there to ensure you are set up for success. Again, here is where you can find the details and training on Soft itself. And please do supply feedback for us so we can improve on our content and delivery on what we're producing for you. Janice, I'll hand it back at this point to you for question and answer. All right, great. Thank you, Mike. All right, audience, we're going to be uh, starting our Q&A session here in just a moment. If you'd like to ask a question, go ahead and submit that question in the white text box. It's located either to the right of your video panel or by scrolling down to just below. Uh, before we do that, though, I'd like to bring your attention to a link in the upper right hand side of the viewing window that says, please take a short survey. That's a link to a short survey for this web conference. We ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful. And if you enjoyed today's web conference or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, this is your chance to let us know. The survey scores are on a scale from one to five with five being the highest score possible. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Mike so he can answer any questions. Mike, floor's all yours. Thank you, Janice. So one common question that has flown in, and we've seen this before in the past, is you know, Skype for Business has released previous adoption rollout toolkits and guides before. You might remember the release and success kit uh, that we've uh, produced before. The, the question that we commonly get is, well, how does this material, um, what, where, what is being delivered now in relation to that? Um, and so really, the way that we, we view the materials that I presented today it's the evolution of what we've been providing in those previous resources, such as the RAS guide. So what we'll be doing is, as a part of soft releases and the fasttrack.microsoft.com site updates, that's really where you'll want to go to get both the core adoption methodology materials that I highlighted previously, as well as the Skype for Business content that is augmenting that and coloring it up. So at some point we'll be we'll be retiring the RAS guide because this is the vehicle at which we will be releasing our materials in the future. So we've got another question coming in and I'll read it verbatim. 
Of your entire Skype for Business user base, what features are used the most? What are used the least? Can you give us a percentage breakdown of utilization for chat, IM, voice, video, and PSTN conferencing? Why aren't users taking advantage of some of the least used features? That's a great question. I'm not gonna have the breakdown for you in this particular session of uh, the specific usage per feature, but I can tell you what we've done from our adoption strategy on how to make uh, adoption a little bit more consumable for the end users and provide a track for them to onboard to the power of the entire suite. So in the past, what we have done is we provided a wealth of adoption materials and resources such as the RAS guide. And, and the feedback that we had gotten back is, you're, you're kind of tossing the kitchen sink at us. And so what we did was we spent some time to start modularizing the adoption content itself and breaking it down into consumable chunks um, in the format of job aids, user guides, which are available up on soft. And so the progression of the, of the materials that we've created are centered around uh, a job aid specifically for I am in presence. And then graduating from that to a job aid to meetings, graduating to that, to a job aid for voice, and then also providing on-ramps to our cloud PSTN conferencing service as well, a specific job aid centered around that. And the idea is that we don't overwhelm our users up front, but we give them a gradual approach on how, that they, how they can onboard to the service itself. And by identifying that path and easing them in with adoption materials around them, we feel that we have seen success with our customers on it becoming a little bit more consumable and less intimidating right up front for end users to onboard to the service itself. So next question coming in, uh, what behavioral changes have you faced when trying to get an organization to adopt Skype video conferencing? For example, we have people who don't want to look at themselves on the screen. Absolutely. So a couple things here. Um, we, we didn't have, we'll have a separate session on, on one, um, making sure that users understand the available devices that are available to them and the behavior on which they interact with our product. So the way that I think about this is that step one in my mind is making sure that users are super comfortable with the devices that they're leveraging to interact with Skype for Business itself. There are a variety of devices such as headsets, uh, puck, speaker pucks to speak into, uh, and making sure that, that your users are familiar with their options and that they're provided options to engage with the product is, is step one there. You know, for example, you know, it, it, it might seem a minimum, minimalist type of, of, um, of issue, but folks care what their hair looks like during the, during the day, during the workday. And if you have a headset that affects folks' hair, they, they will react to that. And so it's important to make sure that you're providing a variety of devices that customers can interact with to make sure that they're having the optimal experience for them with the product itself. And then the next component, so specifically around video, is making sure it's very clear to users on how they interact with video, how they can turn it off, turn it on, and use it to their, to their, um, to their benefit and to their power. And so there is a behavioral change there. It's powerful from the perspective of you can interact very explicitly from a, from a visual perspective with your end users, but you also need to make sure that you train your users on how they can control that and they feel um, empowered by leveraging that particular component of technology when they choose to. So next question coming in is Skype consumer now allows access via the web at httpsweb.skype.com. Do you see this capability coming to Skype for Business in the future? That's a great question. So today, currently, we do have uh, web integration 
from a perspective of if an end user is using the Outlook Web Access e email interface, you, we are now shipping a Skype web experience component alongside of that, which is a light web client that then you can now leverage and interact with, uh, your, with your contacts in a similar fashion that you might do from a desktop client and you, with the Skype for Business rich client. So you, organizations should be experiencing that and you can search for Skype web experience. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the direct link uh, handy with me right now to learn more about that. But we're really excited about that new experience that customers can now interact with. Okay, I believe that wraps up the questions that we have to date, Janice. All right, so do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up this session? I'd just like to thank folks for their time. Um, you know, adoption is something that is near and dear to our hearts, and it's something that, you know, we truly view as a service, and we will continue to ship updates and evolve the content that we are providing. If you have feedback on the content uh, or this presentation on, on delivery or other topics to, to cover, please do take the time to send us the feedback. We are listening and, and we're looking to evolve the service to put you in a better position to reach those end users within your organizations. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, audience, that is going to conclude today's web conference. Attendees may access the web conference recording via a link that will be delivered by email within 72 hours post-conference. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter, Mike, and thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us today. You may now disconnect from the broadcast.